wet in GI, it's in wood barrel, and they open up for people to now suddenly create different styles of jibbing around. That's the complete opposite of what you're trying to do with a GI. You're trying to protect what has taken all these years to create. So absolutely they should put old barrel because that's what they've been using. Yeah, but I, I can... Not I can, because somebody wrote I, something 70 I, years ago. I can attest to exactly the opposite, and respectfully, obviously, Richard. But, you know, you see traditions that are frozen in time as, at the moment, they're being done, forgetting heritage when you research it. Look, I spent night and day researching the history of spirits. We talk Martinique, for example, has done uh, an AOC. And I know you guys, especially with Ashley, so have been quite explorative about old practices, about using reused barrel from, uh, you know, 45 French wines or European wines that actually when the GI was, and in that case, the AOC, which is a step further, was saying <coughs> bourbon barrel. But actually, we discovered that, oh shoot, you know, back then, they were actually using uh, some French 45 wines or European 45 wines, and, and unless you reopen it, then you cannot really do it. So I, I'm just saying, you gotta really make an educated decision when that happens, and not just say, this is what I do today, it's gonna be history forever. I'm just finishing on saying something. I can say attest to this because cognac regulation has done that mistake in 1945. Whereas the guy says, age in old barrel. Guess what? That's what they did right after the war. And they didn't scratch their head and realize that just for 300 years, little years, they were using chestnut, mulberry, acacia. But yes, for, for about 20 or 30 years, they didn't do it anymore. And then now if you do it, it's illegal. And I find this unfortunate because the beauty of rum is the diversity and I think we should. And I think the answer to this, and I'll finish on this, is that the key to all of this, and I think maybe the common denominator, and what, what you touched on, Luca, is transparency. It's transparency. Is that just don't box it in. Don't tell rum, I do it that way, and everybody's got to do it that way or it's not rum. Just let's keep that diversity, but let's be transparent about it. Tell me what you do. Why does it taste like this? What is it so good at what you're doing? And I feel very strong about this because this is the true essence of rum, is that beauty and that diversity that's both technical and cultural. And that's, I spent all my life and my money. Well, I mean, I think I'm totally us, broke now. I'm spending all my money doing this. Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to finish up. We're going to finish up. We're going to finish up. We speak about Michael Schoenow. I actually want to add something as well. Oh, no, okay. Okay, Luca, make it short. Yeah. I'll I'll sure. No, no, no I say no, it's the GI or not GI. Fantastic. I'm very happy. I love Jamaica, Barbados. But uh, inside the Jamaica rum, there are different types of rums. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. In my classification, we speak only about this. Very happy that there is a GI, but then come from a multi from a coffee steel, from a pure single rum. Yeah, this both. is the real you problem. Need both. You need both. That uh, to be transparent and to upgrade the category. I don't like that Long Pond or Hampden are uh, in the same category for the consumer than, uh, I say Clarendon, not to say Clarendon, but to a, a run made in a different way, completely different way. All right, David, so in short, I, I, I went, I, I've seen the evolution of this, so I'm happy to see how much it's evolved Remember since the first time. Yeah, the first time yeah. I was like, eh, I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> Um, so it's nice to see the evolution. It's, it's evolving like oh, it's evolving, and that's what it should be. So it's, a, it's to your point, it's it's the right move. It's the right time. We need to have this conversation. We need to move forward, and we need to start somewhere. So to see it evolve over the past two years to what it is now and what it's looking like is a very positive thing for me to see. Um, so two things: one, the GI. GI is great. I think that uh, if we can get more of like the AOC that happened in Martinique, recognized by certain governments, fantastic. It does come with a challenge, and this is the challenge that we suffer beyond the apparatus, which is that a certain country got rec uh, recognized by the EC, and if you read the GI, anybody who makes rum is scratching their head as to how is this even a thing. And if it gets recognized by the EC, what you have is then consumers buying product with this certification of a GI, this certification of all of our co uh, companies in our country make it this way, and we all know that it's a questionable, questionable approach to authentic, non-additive rums, right? And that's this, and this is where I'm getting at. We need to be 
very honest with ourselves and, I, and acknowledge that one of the biggest problems we have is we have additive rums and then we have non-additive rums. And there is no way to make non-additive rums live in the space of additive rums. Absolutely no way. If you want to talk about age comparisons, price comparisons, and things of that sort. So if the consumer is being misled to, by GI that allows that, and you have brands, Richard being one of the biggest proponents of no additives, right? Richard is working hard to make his rum, and he has to sell at the same price as these additive rums and compete against that flavor profile, it's, a, it's not a win-win situation for, for rum. It's actually counter, counter that, because the category can't move forward because there's no synergy. And this is where I go into, there needs to be a little bit more synergy, uh, or the brands that carry synergies in their profiles, there has to be a space for that to live, because we need to, first and foremost, again, what's the solution? We need to work at it. We need to be able to separate the non-additive rums from the additive rums. And in the terms, and I know that sugar comes into the, this equation, we use sugar, Alexander, you use sugar. We have an internal cap. We don't pass a certain number, and it's below the 20 grams per sugar that most people mention. Um, Alexander has his, and that's fine. What, what I'm more in, in focus with is where we know that they're surpassing 25, 30 grams of sugar, where we know they're using artificial vanillin, where they're using uh, Tutti Frutti, which is exactly the lab name of that flavor. Marshmallow, which many of you in this room right now don't understand that when you taste vanilla in these rums that have additives, you're actually tasting marshmallow flavoring. That's what it's called in the laboratory. Um, so that's a big, big challenge. Now, from the apparatus perspective, I like the conversation where it's starting. I think we still need to work at it because even at Bacardi, I have a problem adapting that because if I give you my heavy distillate from single column, which is a split column, if I decide to give you the one from just the first half versus the heavy distillate from both, uh, or one cut at a shorter time period th through both, they all have different attributes. And then I have to take that, and what many people don't comprehend, and I can tell you this from my experience having uh, for the past four years work with the blenders and the distillers. The biggest thing that shifts when I make my heavy distillate, the biggest difference between my, what we call aguardiente aguacardi, when I make that, and what ends up in superior after a year, you know what's the biggest difference? The biggest difference is the charcoal filtration. Okay. The amount of congeners that I can extract from that distillate takes it from, it can take it from something that you can think, gee, is this, single column or Olympic or you know a, a kettle batch to, oh wow, this is a multi-column distillate, right? So even in my house, my distillates don't behave precisely how they're being depicted, which makes it hard for me right now in this stage to say this can be applied and Bacardi fits all the buckets or uh, fits the multi-column or the single I'm column. I'm gonna move on to Rich, but just in, in, in answer to that, I don't think that the argument is about taste profile when it comes to heavy and light rums coming from column still or pot still, it's about price, as someone said, it's about premium. I remember you made a comment about my cost of making 